Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. We're going to open our King James Bibles, and this is the continuation of the commentary on the book of Hosea. We're going to start in chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of of the land. What does he mean by having a controversy? Means he's got an argument to make with them. He's not happy. Why? Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood toucheth blood. Now, what does he mean by swearing? Is he just talking about cussing, or is he talking about those that do false oaths? You know, uh, somebody says, oh yeah, I'll promise you, you do this work for me, I'll pay you, and then they don't. Uh I'm not sure. Verse 3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet, no, yet let no man strive nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Uh, basically, in my opinion, what this means is, well, somebody that does evil is going to reprove or expose another person's evil. You know, Jesus said... Uh, Well, let's take a look. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, 4, and 5. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. In other words, get the sin out of your life before you expose the sin in somebody else's life, right? Now, what does it mean in verse 4? Yet no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Now, to me, that means they're arguing with the priest. And we're not talking about a Roman Catholic priest here. We're talking about those of the Levite, the tribe of Levi, the priesthood. They were the ones that were to instruct the people in the scriptures. And to strive with them means to argue with them. So, Verse 5, Therefore shalt thou fall in that day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. I believe we're talking about the false prophets here. Verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge of the Lord. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now the thing is, if you don't consider it important to teach your children the ways of the Lord, why is the Lord going to 
be concerned about your children. If you're not concerned about teaching your children about the Lord, why is he going to be concerned about it? And, you know, if the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, what kind of knowledge should we have? Well, let's take a look. So what kind of knowledge are we supposed to have? Well, in Matthew 3, 2, And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 9, 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, there's uh, a whole thing out there, some famous preachers that'll tell you that when we're supposed to repent, we're supposed to repent of our unbelief. But Jesus said, For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Why would he say that? He, he should say, well, you know, well, oh, I'm calling unbelievers to believe. No, he's saying he's calling sinners. He's calling sinners to repentance. So... All right. In Luke chapter 13, and verse 3, and then verse 5, he says, I tell you nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. That's Luke 13, 3 and Luke 13, 5. One thing I learned in college, when, a, when an instructor, teacher, professor said something more than once, I always wrote it down because I knew that was going to be on the test. Jesus said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So evidently, repentance, repentance is important. In Acts 2.38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest dost the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and do, doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Do you know it's only by the goodness of God that leads us to repentance? Turning from our past evil works to we should be turning to good works. That's that's what it's all about. Now, there are people that will tell you that Paul is a false apostle because they'll say, oh, he changed the law. But did he really change the law? Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, uh, not one of our modern-day lawyers. This was a lawyer who was a doctor of the law, Bible law. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so here it is, he's trying to trick Jesus. 
wrong thing to try to do. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And I'm sorry, if you live next door to a bunch of Satanists, I think you should move. I had uh, somebody recently arguing with me that we're supposed to love Satanists. Um, I don't think so. I don't love Satan. I don't love Satanists. And I don't think the Lord loves Satan either. What can I tell you? So love the Lord, love thy neighbor. This is godly knowledge, people. You know, in Hosea chapter 4, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So what kind of knowledge should we have? Godly knowledge. Repentance. Loving the Lord. Loving our neighbor. Let's face it. If you love the Lord, you're not going to commit uh, idolatry with idols. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to kill him to steal his wife or his gold. Uh, you know, that's, that's why... The Two Commandments covers the Ten Commandments. It's the Law and the Prophets. In James chapter 3, verse 13 on, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. All right, in Ephesians 5, 9, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. But then in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, we, uh, we read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Boy, is that some uh, good godly knowledge? I think so. In John 14 and 15, Jesus said, If ye love me, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Well, what's the great commandments? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. And if you walk in the Spirit, there is no law. So, let's go back to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. 
And there shall be like people, like priest. And I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks. In other words, they're asking an idol for advice. And their staff declareth unto them, For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. E-R-R. -R. That's where they get the word error. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. You know, this is what the witches do, people. They do sacrifices in the high places and they burn incense. And to them, the oak tree is sacred. Hosea writes, Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore the people that doth not understand shall fall. And that's exactly what happened when the Assyrians came and the Babylonians came. They fell. Verse 15. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend. See, when Israel was cast away, Judah at that time was still faithful. But... As time progressed, even Judah fell into horrible things that the Lord was not pleased with. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend. And come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Beth Haven, nor swear the Lord liveth. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Ephraim was the main tribe of northern Israel. Just like Judah was the main tribe of, well, Judah and Jerusalem. So basically, the Lord's saying here, well, Ephraim wants to play with idols, worship false gods, worship do Satanism. Let him alone. Let him do it. Verse 18. Their drink is sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love. Give ye. I had a, a, a preacher that I really respect. And he said that the rulers would be a spiritual reflection of the people. You wonder why we've got wicked rulers in this country? It's a spiritual reflection upon the character and the moral and spiritual rot of, well, the United States, the UK, the EU, Europe, So, verse 19, The wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. All right, now remember, the Lord is a merciful God, but those that don't honor him, well, 
they got a problem. There will be a day of judgment and wrath. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 1, and we'll close out this study. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Verse 2. To know wisdom and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation. The words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now let's take a look at something real quick. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, Remember, the, Jesus said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor? Well, 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Let's go back to Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you love the Lord perfectly, there is no fear. Verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. In other words, if sinners come to you and try to uh, make something the evil sound good, don't consent to them. Don't agree. Verse 11. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make, ha and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. You see, the traps that they set for other people, that trap is going to be their trap in the day of the Lord. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy for gain which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Really, is it worth it to kill people, to, to steal their stuff, when the end of your life, you're cast into the pit of hell? Is it really worth it? Verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Strange how wisdom is considered to be a she. 
like a mother or a beloved sister. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her word, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. People that reject the knowledge of the Lord here are considered fools. Turn you at my reproof. In other words, when the Lord corrects you, turn around from your evil ways and get on the right path. That's basically what this is saying. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Ah, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Didn't Jesus say, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God? You had to be born of the spirit, people. Right here, God says, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Now, this part is for those who have rejected the words of the Lord. Verse 24, this is for them. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye had set at naught all of my counsel, and would none of my reproof. Oh, the Lord tries to correct them, but they wouldn't have it. But ye have said it not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your desolation cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated knowledge, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But this is for the believers. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. People, when the Lord puts his hand out for you, you better grab hold and hold on tight. Don't let go. That's, that's it, people. But those that reject the Lord's mercy, look out. Look out. I'm telling you. So, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor. To the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. All glory and honor to him. In Jesus' precious name, amen.